Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com. And in this English lesson, I'm going to give you words and phrases that you can use to talk about sickness. So we're going to look at the difference between sore and ache. I'm going to talk about differences between British and American English. And I'm also going to help you practice when it comes to stressing certain words and the intonation so that you can really get across how sick you feel. But before we get into the phrases, there are two things I need to tell you. Firstly, I have a free gift for you and you can download this and I'll give you the information on it at the end of the lesson. Also, my wife and I recorded a conversation where we talked about getting sick. So be sure to watch that after this video too. When talking about feeling sick in general, there are a few ways that you can do this. You can say, I feel sick. I feel sick, or simply, I'm sick. And later, we'll look at the difference between I feel sick and I feel like I'm going to be sick. But for now, know that we can say I'm sick or I feel sick. You could also say I don't feel well or I don't feel very well. Now, most people say this in a bit of a down way. For example, I don't feel very well today. I don't feel very well today. If you want something a little bit stronger, you can say, I feel terrible today. I feel terrible today. Or just simply, I feel terrible. Now notice that I stress the word terrible. This gives it more emphasis. I feel terrible. Let's talk about colds and sneezing now. The simple way to say that you have a cold is to say, I have a cold. Now, look at the difference between these two sentences. I have a cold and I've got a cold. I have a cold and I've got a cold. When using these two phrases, know that I have a cold is more common in American English and I've got a cold is more common in British English. We can use the word terrible again to give it more emphasis. I've got a terrible cold at the moment. I've got a terrible cold at the moment. You'll also hear people say, I've got an awful cold at the moment. I've got an awful cold at the moment. Here are two fun phrases related to colds. I've got a stuffy nose and I've got a runny nose. To have a stuffy nose means that you can't really breathe out of your nose. So it's difficult to breathe when you have a stuffy nose. And this is especially problematic at night when you can't sleep. And you wake up and you have to sit up in bed because you've got such a stuffy nose. To have a runny nose is a little bit different. And it means that liquid comes out of your nose. You have such a bad cold that liquid just comes out of your nose and that's what it means to have a runny nose. People with colds usually, usually, people with colds usually sneeze a lot. Now do you know what to say to someone who sneezes? It is bless you, bless you. So usually someone sneezes, someone else says bless you and the person who sneezes says thank you. Let's talk about the word ache now, and we'll start with the head. Again, there's a difference in British and American English. I have a headache, I've got a headache. I have a headache, I've got a headache. I want to talk a little bit now about connected speech and relaxed pronunciation, because you don't hear people say, I've got a headache. Instead, in the UK, it is this, I've got a headache got a headache, I've got a headache. So got a becomes got a and everything comes together. So it sounds like it's one word. I've got a headache, I've got a headache. We also use ache with stomach. I've got a stomach ache. And like most things that I'm gonna talk about in this video, we can use the word terrible or awful. I've got a terrible stomach ache got a terrible stomach ache. We've talked about ache, now let's talk about sore. We can use the word sore with things like throat, probably the most common one. I've got a sore throat. 
I've got a sore throat. Here's a quick question for you at this stage. What is the best way to cure a sore throat? What is the best way to cure a sore throat? Leave your answers in the comment section below. I'm intrigued to know what you do when you have a sore throat. We also use sore for neck. I've got a sore neck. And you'll see people rubbing their neck to let you know that it's really sore. I've got a sore neck. The last time I had a really sore neck was on Christmas vacation. And I spent the entire night on the sofa because my son didn't want to sleep in the same room as my sister and he wanted to sleep on the sofa with his dad. But this meant that I wasn't very comfortable and my neck was in this really weird position. And I actually made a video on this. I recorded a live lesson where I talked about having a sore neck. I'll leave a link in the description for you. But yeah, the last time I had a sore neck was on Christmas vacation. You can also have a sore back and you can have sore muscles in general. Now, this might be because you're feeling really sick, but also it could be from playing sport. So the, I got really sore legs after I went biking with a friend and I hadn't been biking for years. So we went mountain biking and it was really difficult. And the next day I had really sore legs. If you have a terrible ache somewhere or your muscles are really sore, you can use this idiom. Okay, are you ready? My back is killing me. My back is killing me. My head is killing me. My throat is killing me. My neck is killing me. Now I made a video on this. I'll leave a link in the description for you. But just practice after me and try to copy the way I say it too. My neck is killing me. The word sick can be used in two main ways. The first way is what I mentioned at the start of this video, where I talked about how you feel. I feel sick, I don't feel well, I feel terrible. But it can also mean to vomit or to throw up. Now, a very common thing to say just before you're going to throw up is this. I feel like I'm going to be sick. I feel like I'm going to be sick. And usually people say this with some panic. I feel like I'm going to be sick because it's not a nice experience. Now, we use the verb going to because we're talking about a prediction based on how we feel. And it's similar to saying, there's a black cloud over there. It's going to rain soon. Manchester United look a great team at the moment. They're going to win today. If we base our prediction on evidence, then we use going to. And again, I made a lesson on this. So go check that out. There is a link in the description. If your body temperature goes above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, I think that's right, then you either have a fever or a temperature. And this is a difference between British and American English. In British English, we say, my son has a temperature today. He can't go to school. In American English, my son has a fever today. He can't go to school. So there's a difference there, a fever and a temperature. But I think that if you use either of those in the other country, then it will work out fine. Now, my son actually had a fever about three weeks ago and his teacher called me to say, Thomas has a fever. You need to come and pick him up. You need to come and pick him up. And to pick someone up means to go and collect them. After watching a video like this, it can be difficult to really learn these phrases over the long term, to be able to commit them to memory. And that is why I have a free gift for you. It is all the phrases that I used in this lesson, and I'll throw in some other ones too, in both text format and audio format. And I'm going to give you a method that you can follow for free so that you can learn these phrases and be able to use them in a flexible way. You'll be able to get the repetition you need to commit these phrases to memory, but you'll also learn the grammar and also how to say them correctly. So all you need to do is click over here and download that free gift. If you want to watch the lesson that my wife and I made, then click over here 
and watch that now. Thank you so much for being here. If you've enjoyed that, please like and share, and I'll see you in the next lesson.